Well, I'm here today to interview someone that I've known for a very long time, uh, although sometimes I know, I wonder if I really know them that well at all. But uh, anyway, welcome, and how have you been coping with the COVID situation? Yeah, thanks, and uh, by the way, I like what you're doing with your hair, it looks great. Uh, I think the thing that uh, has been most difficult for me is uncertainty, uh, which has uh, caused frustration and fear. Uh, we were heading in the direction of restrictions being uh, lifted a little bit, but uh, with the problems in Victoria, restrictions have been tightened more, and that's created a lot of uncertainty. Uh, what would the future look like? Uh, what are we planning for? People were asking uh, what the church was going to do in the next few weeks, and I, I really don't know what's coming up next. And I actually began to feel paralysed in terms of making decisions. But in the middle of the conversation this week, I felt I can actually take control here. This year is sprinting past rapidly, uh, and I know things are not going to get better in a few weeks. I can actually remove the uncertainty by assuming that we'll live under these restrictions till the end of the year. And I feel much of the uncertainty is gone. Uh, we might need to make some adjustments along the way, but many of the factors of how we do church now uh, is just what we will see out in 2020. So uh, I, I feel that I've kind of taken control of some of that uncertainty to just say, Things will stay the same, more or less. The way we're doing church is so different. What are other things that we can hang on to as being an unchangeable thing? Well, actually, church is unchangeable. The church is people. The church is community. The church is relationship. The church is individual people helping and encouraging each other. And if you look at the, the Bible images of the church, we've got the image of family, the church is like a body, the church is a building, the church is a bride, the church is, is even described as an army in some ways. Uh, and they're all about some aspect of relationship and they all have a purpose or a mission. We exist to help people. We exist to help people love God, to love others and to make disciples. And that doesn't change. So are you saying that we're not going to have 260 people in our building for the rest of 2020 and that even if we have 100, um, we won't be bursting into spontaneous songs of, of praise anytime soon? Uh, so how do we be the church if, if that's the case? How do we help people to love God and love others and make disciples? Yeah, that's a great question. I can tell you're a really smart guy. Um, if the church is relationship and encouragement, uh, you need to create an opportunity to connect with somebody else and encourage them. At the moment, you can do that in your home, in a cafe or on the phone. And you need to take the opportunity to do that, to connect with somebody else for their encouragement. Secondly, uh, the thing that we could do is have a watch party. Now that simply means that you invite someone to your house on Sunday morning and, and you, know, you watch church together, maybe you eat together, you have some fellowship together. They might be the same people each week, it might be, might be different people. Um, our church survey indicated that only 17% of our, our church has invited somebody else to their house to watch church uh, of a Sunday morning and I would love to see that number increase dramatically um, because I think we have this opportunity of connection on Sunday morning in each other's houses. One group has actually been doing this regularly and uh, they get together for church, for morning tea, uh, for lunch, uh, then they play board games in the afternoon and uh, look, these guys, uh, they aren't just encouraged, they're excited about what they do on Sunday. And you don't have to make it a, a whole day event like that, but an opportunity for fellowship and encouragement is, is a great thing. Uh, our church website uh, also has a new blue tab on it, and it says pastoral care slash catch up. Uh, our survey indicated that about 13% of the church felt that they were isolated at this time. So if you press that, that blue tab, uh, you can 
nominate a time for me to come and visit you. Uh, I'm happy to catch up with you, whether it's something really important you want to talk about or whether it's just a catch up and a chat. So if you're not a computer person, ring the office and Carolyn will organise that for you. Uh, home groups are another expression of what the church looks like. If you have never been part of a home group, now is the time to join one. And if you have been part of a home group, now maybe is the time for you to become a leader and, and form a new group. Again, call me or the office if you want to be part of, of a home group. We exist for this reason, to love God, to love others and to make disciples. So let's, let's go and do it.